Boots, Vaseline, and a straight edge. Um, I saw the trailer and I gagged. Um, literally, I gagged because um, the boots and the Vaseline were in a bag full of props that I brought with me for rehearsal. So there were pens and pencils and there was a composition notebook and there was another little book. Like, you know, back then when, we, when I was growing up, I'll say, you know, I was born in 73. So in the 80s, we read books like Ramona Cleary books and that kind of thing. So I had like a little book in there. I had a bunch of stuff inside this bag, props. Um, and there was no straight edge. And the only thing I can say to that is, is if you go back, watch the moment. You see me pull the Vaseline out. You see me pull the boots out. Um, you don't even see my face when the word straight edge happens because not only did I not have a straight edge that day, I didn't say straight edge that day, um, but it was me that said straight edge. It was a separate conversation where I was talking about what my props were going to be <laughs> in the monologue. So that was an audio clip that was edited and I will I've avoided using the word edited because everybody goes so ham when they say you scream editing but that was editing at its finest or maybe not um, there was no talk of a straight edge inside of that conversation and I didn't have one and even when you go to see um, the responses from the other cast members they don't mention a blade of any kind because there wasn't a blade said that day so I think we probably all found out about the straight edge at the same time. And at this point, it's taken on a life of its own. But you won't hear any of the other members in the recorded segments. Now, what they say now is literally whether or not they decide to perpetuate something that is not true. And I just have to go hard on saying that that is a lie. And I don't want to call anybody else a liar. But if they've agreed to perpetuate that, then there's really nothing else to say because now you're talking about trying to say that I am actually the kind of person that if I decide that I don't like a person or I'm upset with a person that I could bring myself to a point to slice them or cut them or stab them and that is irresponsible to me. Right. That's irresponsible on the, the part of any other artist that would agree to perpetuate that. That's irresponsible on the part of any network that would perpetuate that. That's irresponsible on the part of any production company that would edit that or perpetuate that because I am still a working woman in this business and I have to be able to work by my name and my reputation. So when you tell somebody that I'm the type of person that can go out and I would stab somebody or cut somebody um, if I can't have my way, that's crazy. Right. You know, that's not even, she snapped. Right. You're saying I couldn't have my way. <laughs> mm. So I was gonna cut somebody over it. And you know, I, I am the girl that grew up in the projects in New York City and that was a part of the life, but that's what the props were about. And I did fight as a kid. That was a survival mechanism. I don't need to fight at 40 years old. I don't live in the projects anymore. I don't, you know, and, and that's not, and if I did live in the projects, I may need to be a 40 year old person that whips out the, the Vaseline and the Timberlands to fight. But with that, I'll say this too. Ask any person that lives in the hood. They don't announce they're going to beat somebody up. Right. They do it. Right. You know, so it, none of it, in that, with that respect, none of it makes sense. You don't make the announcement that I'm coming to whip your behind. It, you just go beat somebody down and it's over with. And that's so just the you, reality. You were pulling them out of your bag yes. to say, these are my props? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And I was questioning, well, why didn't anybody else know? Actually, we'd all had a conversation that because we'd lost so much time dealing with the foolishness, mm -hmm. if you go and look, Tori Russell was there that day. Right. He came prepared to rehearse the ladies that day. We'd all figured out and had this conversation. We'd lost so much time dealing with all of this extra stuff for the sake of the cameras that we needed to come in ready to work and ready to have rehearsal and we needed to bring whatever we needed to bring. I was the only girl in rehearsal with props that day. That's, is that why you said, I got my boots. I got my stuff. I got my I have my stuff. I have my things with me. But truth, okay. there was an off camera conversation because we did talk about with production the stuff that we needed and, the com and what we were told is we don't have a big budget. We can't get this. We can't get that. We're not spending money on that. The discussion among the ladies when the cameras weren't rolling, if we're doing this for the television show, we shouldn't have to spend our own money on props. So I'm not going to buy props. You were not confronting. Shantae Moore. Not at all. 
did she feel as though you were in that moment? Not according to a conversation that we had after the fact. Actually, she didn't feel it in that moment. She didn't address it in that moment. I don't know that you'll ever see that on camera, okay. but she didn't react to it because she wasn't being threatened and she didn't feel that she was being threatened. Out of her own mouth, okay. she got all the way home at the end of the day after shooting all day long with us and received a phone call and somebody said, you know that was for you. You know that Vaseline and those Tims were for you. And that's where it took on a life because I had no idea that that was even the conversation that was going around. I was called to a restaurant after the fact, after this had literally been going on for about a week and I didn't know about it. I was asked to meet with Shantae and Mo at a restaurant because they wanted to have a conversation with me and it came up in the conversation that Shantae felt that I threatened her that day. I had no idea that this is what was going on. But that was a film day, that was a camera day, we were on the set and they filmed that. After the trailer came out, I was disgusted, I reached out to production, I asked them like, what the heck is going on, y'all can't put this out there, I didn't threaten her with a knife, and you've taken the Vaseline and the Timberlands out of context. I was told, it's just the trailer, we gotta make the trailer hot so people will wanna watch the show. Trust the process is their phrase. Let it play out. In the end, people will see what it really is. What all that people are seeing right now is that you're trying to depict me as somebody who is crazy, right. <laughs> somebody who likes to fight, and somebody who bullies other people, and that's not cool.